this is Tom Radacki. And listen, magnesium is a positively charged ion. And me as a positive guy, we both get along. And that's why I'm spending a lot of time going over all the best new studies, all the human trials on magnesium. What do the actual studies show? I'm gonna be going over specifics this year, last year, is it worth taking? Does it help you? Is it a waste of money? Which ones are the best ones? How much you should be taking? Who is it a danger for? We're starting with all the stuff you need to know about magnesium now. Historically, in our diets and the water supplies, we had a ton of magnesium, but now 66 plus percent of people are deficient. It's missing in our food supply. It's missing in our water supply. It's really depleted. Blood tests only measure 1% of magnesium levels. People are taking bad magnesiums. So for example, the most common one, magnesium oxide, is not absorbed in your bloodstream. So we're gonna go over all of these and review what you should be taking and how you should be correcting your diet. This video is gonna focus on new magnesiums and all the new studies coming out. But if you wanna know the basics, the best diet, where to get it, who's deficient, all that kind of stuff, check out this video link below on the big magnesium secrets and scams link below. I personally love magnesium. I can't get enough of it. There's 600 plus enzymes that it helps with. I have comments all the time about how magnesium cured insomnia, other health conditions, and how it's changed people's lives. Just check some of the comments on some of my magnesium videos. It is absolutely insane and absolutely humbling. I'm gonna get into magnesium 3 and 8 because this is one that I've started taking myself. It's called Magteen, and there's a lot of impressive studies, specifically how it impacts the central nervous system, your brain and the types of changes it makes. This is a new form of magnesium. I've kind of been contacted by the researchers. It's called magnesium 3 and 8. And they said, hey, you're making some mistakes in some of your videos about magnesium 3 and 8. So today I'm gonna to be going over the 2023, the 2024 research on magnesium 3 and 8. What have we been missing and is it worth the extra money? I've always seen the hype on magnesium 3 and 8. And the thing is, until you really spend hours and do a deep dive into these research studies, it's hard to say for certain. There's a lot of hype for thousands of supplements out there. So what is worth it necessarily? Our brain is at its peak size at age 25. And after the age of 40 years old, every decade, our brain actually shrinks 5%. It's not functioning as well. That's just the reality. The older we get, and once we get towards the end, our physical capacity does unfortunately decrease. At 70, it shrinks even faster, and statistically, we have less cognitive function. This is a very sad and sobering reality that happens to all of us. It will, and there's not much we can do, or we thought necessarily. And number two, cognitive decline. In the study that I'm looking at, one out of nine people over age 40 said they think their memory is getting worse. Anxiety and stress, especially after COVID and the lockdown, that's the number one concern health-wise for 18 to 34 year olds. According to a 2022 Global Consumer Survey by the Ingredient Transparency Center. And relaxation and sleep, this is another big concern. Brain size, brain aging, cognitive function, anxiety and stress, relaxation, sleep. These studies go over how magnesium impacts all of these. Just look at the statistics since 2000. Alzheimer rates are going up dramatically as the major cause of death. Breast cancer, prostate cancer, heart disease, stroke, HIV are all improving, but brain-related changes are getting worse for humanity. Magnesium essentially influences the release of neurotransmitters. It modulates serotonin, dopamine, melatonin, norepinephrine. This modifies your mood and sleep regulation. At least 50% of people in America are not getting enough sleep and 35% are essentially not getting more than six hours per night according to the CDC. We're gonna go over the magnesium studies and how they can impact brain health Specifically, these newer studies focus on magnesium L3. This is kind of the one that's getting all the hype now. We're gonna go over whether the hype is true or not true. The first study we're looking at, it shows that magnesium 3 and 8 can cross the blood-brain barrier. The study I looked at tested magnesium L3 and 8 versus magnesium chloride. I personally take magnesium chloride in the past and with my family and magnesium gluconate in milk. 
After 24 days, the only one that raised it statistically in this study was magnesium L-threonine. Magnesium does go up in your bloodstream, taking the other supplements into your spinal cord and into your brain. Magnesium L-threonate was the best one. Then there was another study for synaptic density. The hippocampus is associated with memory. And as we age, the hippocampus declines. This is known. A mouse study looked at magnesium L-threonate and essentially mice that supplemented with magnesium L-threonate after two weeks had significantly higher hippocampus synaptic density. And in the ones who stopped it, their density then did decrease. There was a second study where magnesium L-threonate decreased inflammation in the brain and impaired memory issues in binge eating mice. And in 2023, there was a post-surgical pain study that essentially showed that mice that had surgery, if they took magnesium L3 and 8, they had much lower pain levels and much lower depression and anxiousness in male rats. Whereas the rats who did not take magnesium L3 and 8 and had the same procedures had much higher stress, pain, and anxiety. Mice don't always translate, you know, we're both mammals, but it doesn't always translate to human studies. But the magnesium L3 and 8 testing in human studies, there's a lot of good tests coming out, and we're talking in the last year or so. The first one I'm going to look at is a 12-week randomized double-blind placebo study in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease. The effect of magnesium L3 and 8 looked at four areas. Number one, executive function, which is planning and juggling tasks. Number two, working memory, short-term memory testing. Number three, episodic. And number four, attention. How well do you pay attention? There was 51 participants in the 50 to 70 year old study. Magnesium is absorbed well in the blood, kidneys, and red blood cells. They compared different types of magnesium. Magnesium L3 and 8, magnesium chloride, which is one of the more popular ones, including that's what's in the creams, and number three, magnesium gluconate. Magnesium L3 and 8 was absorbed well in the blood, the kidneys, the red blood cells, but studies showed that magnesium L3 and 8 was absorbed best in the brain and the central nervous system. In fact, the other ones didn't necessarily raise it. And in all four scores, it significantly improved memory, cognitive ability, and the four functions overall that I mentioned in a comp composite. According to this study, the difference between taking magnesium L3 and 8 versus not taking it after about a month, your brain age, the way they defined it in their study, was about nine years. It made your brain on average nine years younger. Again, that's just one study with 51 people. They used basically a random existing psychological test, but that was their conclusion. Magnesium L3 and 8 in a double blind placebo study was very effective. Another good human study was performed in China. They took 109 Chinese adults aged 18 to 65 and they gave them magnesium L3 and 8. This was a double blind study that compared people who took it versus people who did not take it. They had their standard national clinical memory standardized test. This was already in existence before that. The score improved significantly in those taking magnesium L3 and 8 versus those not taking magnesium L3 and 8 after 30 days of supplementation. And again, some of the other ones show that magnesium L3 and 8 penetrates well into the spinal cord and the brain, whereas other forms of magnesium do not penetrate as well. Magnesium L3 and 8, according to these human double-blind placebo studies, which is one of the higher levels of testing, it was shown to be successful. And the higher you went up in age, the more beneficial the magnesium was. So then there was a third study I found. It was magnesium L3 and 8 for stress and anxiety. This was also a randomized double-blind placebo study with adults for, ranging from 50 to 70. They used what's called the Hamilton Anxiety Rating Scale, and subjects weighed between 50 to 70 kilograms. On average, they get into the dosage range, ended up being about 1.5 grams to 2 grams per person, depending on the weight. People who weighed 70 kilograms were about 1.5 grams per day, and patients who were about 100 kilograms, fairly large person, that's well over 200 pounds, took about 2 grams per day. That's more than the standard that's recommended by you know the national recommendation. They took it a little bit higher. 
but a 12-week study on the Hamilton Anxiety and Stress Index showed a significant decrease in stress and anxiety testing. How do you know if you have a magnesium deficiency? And how do you know that you need magnesium 3 and 8 specifically for your central nervous system in your brain? Well, there's no perfect answer, but here's our best guess to decide if you do. Our whole body has up to 26 grams of magnesium. Approximately 60% is stored in bone, 39% is inside our cells, not in our blood, and just 1% is found in free or ionized form in the blood vessels. So we're measuring just 1% of our total body's magnesium. A myth is, can blood levels measure body magnesium? Some people say yes, but most people I think would admit that measuring just 1% of the total level is not a true test, even though there is some debate. There are some research techniques that allow for whole body magnesium assessments. And these are number one, magnesium load test. This involves taking a high dose of magnesium through an IV and seeing how much comes out in your urine over a specific time. Is this a perfect test? It's a pretty complicated test that's pretty advanced. Then there's the magnesium isotope dilution test. Basically, you have radio labeled magnesium that gets put into your body and you can use different types of imaging to measure that or seeing how much comes out in your urine. Is that something you wanna do? It's not necessarily something I wanna do. So rather than measuring it, if it's safe to, and cost effective to take magnesium, is that probably the best way? The tough part with medicine right now is there's tests for everything and there's opinions for everything, but most patients I run into have to wait months to even get in to see me and, or their primary care doctor the system is not working correctly. People don't get proper tests. They can't get their vitamin tests. Really, unfortunately, most people have to rely on themselves to take care of themselves. And that's the way it's always been. And that's why we make videos like this to give people additional resources to make a better decision. Rather than getting an expensive test, realistically, if it's cost effective and relatively safe to take magnesium in the required amounts, I just focus on doing that and see whether you feel better or not. Most people in the comments actually let us know, hey, I started doing that and I feel a lot better in the areas that were mentioned in these studies. Your brain has something called the blood-brain barrier, and the studies we looked at show that magnesium 3 and 8 is the best at penetrating into your central nervous system compared to the other types of magnesiums that previously were recommended. Here's the dosage. For a man per day, you wanna get about 420 milligrams per day. For a woman, you wanna get about 300 milligrams per day. That being said, that's just an average. If you're a really tall woman or a really short man, that could differ. I'm not gonna get into kids dosing because under 18, I don't deal with kids. These are common options that are meant to be laxatives. So magnesium oxide is very common. It's meant to loosen your stool, not to give you magnesium. Same with hydroxide, that's milk of magnesia, just to loosen the stool. Magnesium carbonate, so these are antacids. You don't actually absorb these. And magnesium sulfate, same thing. It's a laxative, you're not meant to absorb these. So don't take these, they're not beneficial in terms of acquiring magnesium. Three really good, high-quality, double-blind, randomized placebo studies that compared people who took it, who did not take it, and they were both blinded. They didn't know which ones they were taking. Some of the conclusions we can draw about magnesium L3 and 8 from the studies are magnesium chloride and magnesium citrate, which are the ones that I always recommended in the past, do not build up as well in the brain and the spinal cord. You still get a lot of benefits in the rest of your body but magnesium L3 and 8 builds up in your brain a little bit better. Chronic pain, magnesium 3 and 8 is proven in almost all of these studies to really help with chronic pain. So that's headache, joint pain, back pain. It helps manage the receptors. We talk about the mechanism in a different video. In my studies, it helps increased hippocampus nerve density. So that's Parkinsonian type syndromes, brain activity, and it's also shown across numerous studies to help with anxiety and sleep. So I go over a lot of the receptors more in depth in other videos. And in the largest level double blind study, it helped with memory, function, executive function, the compositive memory score and brain function was much higher. The study also considered brain age. They used the mathematical formula, but brain age was said to reduce by nine years in a large double-blind study. 
and further better memory after just 30 days of use. So that's taken about 1.5 to 2 milligrams per day. In 30 days, you already start to see noticeable changes in memory and potential Alzheimer changes per this study. And the older you are, the more beneficial the results were in the Chinese double blind study. So for example, if you were 80, you had better improvement in symptoms than if you were like 30. And stress and anxiety. So the Hamilton index, the fear index showed a decrease in anxiety at 12 weeks compared to the placebo. Now let's talk the good magnesium. So obviously we're focusing on magnesium three and eight, but I'm going to compare it to all the other ones. We talked about the bad ones like magnesium oxide. You don't want to take magnesium citrate's great. It's good absorption, good for headaches, doesn't really penetrate to the brain as well and can cause some loosening of the stool, which could be good or bad. The powder, I always think it's a little bit cheaper. It's a little bit easier. You know, you can put it in your water, control it. So it's pretty effective there. Magnesium glycinate, same kind of thing, doesn't cause the bowel and GI issues. In my sleep video, I go over glycinate. That makes you a little bit sleepy as well. So magnesium and glycinate could be pretty effective, but again, it doesn't get through the brain. So magnesium three and eight, this is the nice one. There's a lot of different brains. It's good for crossing into the brain barrier. It's a little bit more money, but realistically the effects might be worth it. Tell me what you think. Magnesium or rotate, good for athletes, more energy, also one of the newer, more expensive ones. And magnesium taurate, good for diabetics, blood sugar and mood. But the reality is, in this video, we're kind of putting our weight behind the magnesium three and eight. That's where the studies are coming out now. And magnesium malate, also some good effects like anti-inflammatory actions. Me and my family, I ordered a lot of magnesium three and eight. It is a little bit more expensive, not significantly more expensive than the other types. I used to recommend the powders in the past, like magnesium glycine, magnesium citrate, and magnesium chloride, I like those. Magnesium l 3 and 8 is a little bit more beneficial according to the studies into getting into the brain. Those four major functions, you know, brain function, memory, stress, anxiety, sleep, and pain management, you know, because it penetrates your central nervous system better, it could be indicated that this is the beneficial one. If you have a few more bucks to spend, Tell me if it's working for you. I'll tell you, I'm gonna try it for the next 60 days or so. I'm gonna make a video how it's functioning for me. You know, with one statistic number, it's hard to say for sure. I love to hear the comments. If you're using it, is it making a difference for you? Let me know in the comments.